Hi dear students, today we are going to discuss a poem by Kamla Das, My Mother at 66. My Mother at 66, written by Kamla Das. Now, Kamla Das is a modern poet. She is a feminist poet. She is a sex poet. So we know that Kamla Das is one of the contemporary poets. She is a modern poet. She writes on modern themes. She writes on modern society. She, she effectively and poignantly depicts the frailties, that is the weaknesses of human character. She probes the heart and soul of a woman in her poems. She deals with women's psychology towards men and she deals with men's psychology towards women. So her themes are not always traditional, you know, they're modern. She has a number of novelties in her poetry. Her ideas can be said to can be said to be uh, her ideas can be said to be distinguished from other poets, even her contemporaries. She's a unique poet. She's one of her of her own kind. And then she's a feminist poet. She writes about the women. She wants the rights of women. And she wants equality with men. She doesn't like the women to be the subordinate of men. She doesn't like the male the male dominant society. She wants equal rights with men. She wants women to stand on equal platform with men. So she's a f feminist and then she's a sex poet because you know she deals with sexual issues also. She deals with marriage issues, marital issues also. She deals with the relationship between a man and a woman and she probes the relationship between a man and a woman too deeply. And when she deals with issues of sex and when she deals with sexual issues, she goes to the extent of being vulgar sometimes. So she's a modern poet, she's a feminist poet and she's a sex poet. But fortunately, we have a normal poem of hers here in your syllabus. My mother, it is about her relationship with her mother. It is about her fear of losing her mother. So I'm gonna explain the lines of the poem to you now. And the poem begins abruptly. She begins it by saying, Driving from my parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, I saw my mother beside me, those open-mouthed, her face Asian like that of a corpse, and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked, but soon put that thought away. So here she says, Driving from my parents' home, So she was driving from her parents' home. Easy to understand language. There's nothing I have I had explained here. She was driving from her parents' home. Where where was she headed for? She was headed for Cochin. She was going to Cochin. So driving from her parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning. To Cochin. She was driving from her parents' home to Cochin last Friday. Last Friday morning, in fact. So when she was driving from her parents' home to Cochin last Friday morning, she says, I saw my mother beside me. I saw my mother beside me. Means she was driving a car and her mother was sitting beside her. Two of them were going to Cochin last Friday morning. So her mother was sitting beside her. She was sitting by her or next to her in the car. And she saw her mother doze, open mouth. Doze. When you're sleepy, your eyelids tend to cl tend to shut. Your eyelids tend to fall down. And you can't control falling asleep, even sitting in a seat or a car. That is called dozing. Sometimes students, you doze in your teacher's class when the lecture is boring. Sometimes you doze in the theater when the film is boring. In summer afternoons, everybody dozes. So, our mother was dozing, open-mouthed. And when you doze, your mouth is sometimes open. So, her mother was dozing, she was sleepy, and she was open mouth. And she, she wasn't realizing that her mouth was open because she was dozing. When you doze, you are half asleep already. And you may uh, fall full asleep, you know, at any time. So she was dozing. And the poet looked at her. And the next line says, her face Asian like that of a corpse. Her face Asian. Asian means, what do ashes symbolize? Ash. Ashes. You know your father's ash tray. So ash, ashes symbolize death. Ashes symbolize lifelessness. Ashes symbolize the lack of livelihood. Ashes symbolize death. So her face, Asian. Her face was like dead. Okay. Her face was inactive. Her face was not bright. It was inactive. It was too old. It was 
it was inactive, it was passive. And it was inactive like that of a corpse. Corpse means dead body. It was inactive like a dead body. Asian face means inactive face like a dead body's face. Now you see Asian and corpse. Corpse means dead body and Asian also means something that is like death. Lifeless. So Asian means lifeless, corpse means lifelessness or uh, lifeless. Lifeless, yeah. Both of them mean the same. And the two words emphasize that the idea of her mother's face being left inactive. Her mother's face was old and it had lost all liveliness, all enthusiasm. It was drained of all, uh, it was drained of all energy. There was no energy on her face. So her face was Asian, like that of a dead body. So when she saw her mother's face, which was inactive like a dead body, like a dead body's, then she says, and realized means the poet realized and realized with pain that she was as old as she looked. So she re she realized with pain, she realized with pain that she was as old as she looked. Now when you look at your grandpa who is very old and who is on the on the verge of death, you realize with pain that he's soon about to pass away. You know it in your heart. You don't reveal it. You don't talk to anyone about this, but you know that you won't uh, be able to you won't be able to have your grandpa with you for a long for a long time now. He's too old to live now. He's soon gonna have to die. So she when she looked at the inactive face of her mother's, she could see that her mother was getting very old and she was she was inching closer to death. She was drawing closer to death. So she realized with pain and it was painful to realize that her mother was as old as she looked means she was soon going to die. The poet couldn't elude the inevitable death of her mothers. The poet couldn't, uh, the poet knew that, you know, she can't avoid losing her mother. There's no way. Death is inevitable. So she, with pain, she realized with pain, she, it was p painful for her to realize that her mother was really very old now. And, and she would soon lose her. The poet would soon lose her. That's why she realized with pain that she was as old as she looked. It was no deception that she would soon die. She was very old. But then the poet says, but soon put that thought away. Soon put that thought away. But then you see, you do look at your grandpa sometimes who is very old and who is about to die, who is sick. And you know that he will soon die and you will lose him forever real soon. You do realize with pain, but then you put that thought away. You reconcile to the fact. It's painful. But and, and you grieve in your heart, you feel so bad in your heart, and you're afraid to lose 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 your old ones. However, you ha you you have to be reconciled to the fact that everybody has to go, everybody has to die. So she soon put away that thought. She tried to remove her attention from the fact that her mother is soon gonna die. She put that thought away, and then what did she do? She did one thing. As the poem moves, as the poem moves on, she put that thought away and looked out at young trees sprinting looked out at young trees sprint so she looked out at the young trees moving running with her car the trees seem to run with your weak don't they so and looked out at young trees sprinting and she looked out at the trees at the young trees that were that were that seemed to run with their car young trees sprinting and she also saw the merry children spilling out of their homes the merry children Spilling, spilling out of their home. Merry means happy children. So happy children, spill means you know to come out in large numbers. So happy children were coming out in large numbers out of their homes. So she put the thought of her mother's death away and then she looked out at young trees sprinting. She looked out at the young trees that seemed to run with the car and then she saw happy children. Spilling out means coming out in large number. Uh, they, they were coming out of their homes probably to play and they were full of life. Now, do you know why she looked out and why this, this, these two, li two, three lines are given in this poem? There is a contrast, contrast between the condition of her mother and between the, uh, and the condition of the trees and the children. By contrast and by, by comparison and contrast, you communicate your ideas all the more effectively. If she just said, you know, like you know, if she just said, my mother is very old and she's about to die soon, it wouldn't be as effective. But when she compared her mother's condition, she compared and contrasted her mother's condition with the young trees sprinting and the merry children, happy children spilling out of their home. Then the idea of her mother, of her mother's de death, near death, really is touching. That idea is all the more effectively communicated by that. 
there is a contrast between between the two. Her mother was lifeless. Her mother's face was lifeless. She was uh, inactive like a dead body's. Her face was inactive like a dead body's. But the trees were running. There was movement. There was no movement in her. There was no energy in her mother. She was almost lifeless. But here there is a lot of energy. There is a lot of movement. There is a lot of life. There is a lot of fervor in the trees. And there is a lot of fervor in the fervor and, and vigor and energy in the, in the children. They are happy. They are excited. And they are coming out of their homes in large numbers, probably to play. Some must be coming out jumping, some must be coming out uh, playing, some must be shouting, some must, must be having fun, some must be singing. So uh, there, is a, there is a contrast between the mother's condition and the children's and the tree's condition. The mother is full of, like the mother is without energy, without vigor, without, without um, enthusiasm. Her face is like, is, is, is inactive and passive like a, like a dead body. She's about to die real soon. But trees are full of energy. They, they seem to run. There's life in the trees. There's life in the children. They're happy. They, their faces are not Asian or inactive like the, like, like, the, like the poet's mothers. Their faces are happy. Their faces are brightening, are bright. They are happy children. And they are coming out of their homes excitedly. So their faces are shining with joy, pleasure. They are full of excitement. They are full of life. And by the contrast, the, the idea is, all, is communicated all the more effectively. Got this, students. And that's it for now. We'll do the rest of the thing in part two. Okay. Thank you very much.